out, Your Honor. He, he did it. There's a total of 28 times where he, he does something like that. Literally, he says, do you remember explaining that you were refer that what you were referring to is at the hospital um, that the police were telling us to lie, put thug in it when you talk to Detective Lewis? OK, but that that's. So when he says, do you remember a thing that there is no evidence took place? He is asserting that one, it took place and then asking the witness improperly but in front ever, of the jury. Did, did he ever talk to Detective Lewis? No, that's just what I'm telling you, Your Honor. And then Mr. Steele gets here and says to you all this stuff and still never shows you anything to suggest that Adrian Bean talked to Detective Lewis. Mr. Steele, you want to respond to that? Because that's critical to me. I, I, I mean, it's critical in the sense that if, if, if there was no conversation between the two of them, then that would, that would assume facts, not in evidence. He, and oh, if, hold on. I'm asking Mr. Steele a question now. Just hold on, Miss Love. Okay. Your on the recording that you just heard at the beginning, the first couple of minutes, and I don't have the time in front of me, it was not shown on the screen, Mr. Bean said when he spoke with the detectives or the authorities, whatever his words are, at the hospital. That's what he says. Okay, but here, here's her beef. If you'd have said, who'd you talk to? And he said, I talked to the detective. Well, was it Detective Lewis? Was it Detective Quinn? Was it Detective uh, whoever? What I think that the question assumes is he did, he did, in fact, talk to Detective Lewis, and he didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true. Well, I'm not conceding that. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you that I haven't heard anything that would indicate that, that that's truth. Yeah, well, you, yeah. that you, have a, you have a good faith basis to ask that. You haven't heard anything of who he spoke with. That's my point. That's the point. But, the, but, but you all can't, but you two, neither one of you can proffer that. Judge. It's, pro it's not proper, Mr. Steele. No, no, no. Listen. It's not. It, it, it would be a violation before me for you to for you to put that in front of this jury. You're not going to be in the September 17, 2000. You are saying to the court that you have a belief that there is another statement out there. There's not. Why would you, how could you say that? Because there, it hasn't been brought up. If, if, it, if it gets brought up, then we'll correct it at that point in time. Sure. But right now. I'm going to direct you not to not to inquire that line. You don't have a basis to do so. Not true. Well, it is go true. ahead and go ahead and, and, and make a statement and see what happens. Your Honor, listen. And go ahead and make the statement in contravention to what I've just told you. And I'm telling you that you will have some problems in front of me. I'm, I'm trying to articulate to you. I, you have told me everything at this point. You, yes, you, you have told me that you, there's got to be a statement. Now, if you find the statement, I will, one, apologize to you. Two, I will take corrective action. That's probably not going to be, uh, probably not going to be nice to anybody. But at this point, there's nothing for me to do other than if you don't have a good faith basis to do it, you can't ask the question. Honor, listen, there is a recording between Detective Quinn and Adrian Bean where Adrian Bean says, I lie to your... But we don't know what he lied about. <laughs> he says he lied about who... He's talking about the car. This. But we still don't know whether or not he had a conversation with Detective Lewis. And I made it clear. It's, it's 10 years ago. But you said you had in your conversation with Detective Lewis. That's what you proffer. I said, or any other detective or law enforcement. Read the transcript. I made it clear. I don't know. He doesn't remember names. He says it was Detective Quinn. Also, on the recording on January, Sunday, January 22, 2023, Mr. Bean is the one who said this happened in the hospital. Your Honor, I'm the one complaining about I don't have the statement. I've been asking for it. This is Brady. Clearly, there was a statement. There. We don't, but but we don't know if there's a statement. You, you're you're supposing there's a statement, okay? And, and and there may be. And and you know what I said? And you know what I said earlier? I said if there is Brady that's not disclosed, then that particular individual is going to have some problems with me. 
I told you that already. Or I have, I have a lot of different remedies I can execute at that point in time. There has to be. That's why I gave you. But you, but you can't, but you can't intimate or otherwise cross over the line when you don't have a, when you don't have the statement to back it up. Judge, I've been robbed of the statement. But, but we don't know where the statement is. If we find the statement or it comes up or, 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 or in cross-examination, Quinn brings up and says, hey, how to have a statement right here on my massive, my massive file. And if, he do, and, and if he does, then, of course, I will revisit this particular subject again. I'm saying it's been deleted. It's been yes. destroyed. We don't know. You don't know. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. We had the same issue that happened earlier in this trial about a statement. We don't know whether or not it was the hack or whether or not it's intentional. Now, you can make whatever whatever hay you want out of it. I mean, that's and the jury can decide for what, what, what they want to give it. But but that but you but you cannot ask the question in its current form. You just can't. Your Honor, I'm not asking any questions, but you have to understand the following, please. Six days later, Detective Quinn and Adrian B are on recording where Adrian B tells Detective Quinn, I lie. About what? I lie. About what? About who was driving the car. He gets cut off. Detective Quinn says, yeah, tell me about it. Where's that statement? That's what I've been asking for. Well, when, uh, well, when we get, well, when we, but that, but that doesn't still give you the latitude at this point in time to ask that question. Now, I told you. If we find out from Quinn, and, I, and I'm telling the state that if I find out that, that, that the statement exists, um, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people. Well, what if you don't find out it exists? I still am entitled to it. That's my whole point. Okay, but, but here's the thing. You've asked me for it. I've asked them. If it comes up later or I find out it's sitting someplace that was in, that was that, that was in possession of the state, uh, pursuant to case law and definition, then we'll have some problems. But you're asking when you have to find the statement for I'm telling you the statement was made. You we don't, we, 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 it doesn't work that way, Mr. Steele. I'm sorry. It does work that way. No, it does not. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. And you haven't presented any case law to tell me how to do that. And I'm telling you, as, as, as the judge presiding over this case, if you do that, it's misconduct. I'm not doing anything. I'm telling you right now. I don't know what you're telling me. I'm not. I am telling you, you have no good faith basis at this point in time to ask that question at right now or to intimate that. I didn't ask any question. You are listening to this to turn the I'm ready to cross-examine. I'm going to play the recording you just heard. This gentleman tells me I'm recording. That he was at the hospital speaking with law enforcement. I want that. It is backed up because on recording, six days after the crash into that side of the building, Your Honor, Detective Quinn and Mr. Bean are talking about the statement that Mr. Bean made prior. I don't have it. And when the court asked me, well, you got to find it, or if I find it, it wasn't given over. Then, we, then, then we'll have some problems. Well, then, I, then we'll have some issues. I, I have some issues now. I've been begging for it. <laughs> the state's supposed to give this. They let me ask y'all. Let me ask. Oh, hold on, Mr. Okay, stop for a second. Miss Love, do you have you have you inquired of Detective Quinn where this other statement or may Judge, may be? Judge, that's just it. Mr. Steele is literally manufacturing evidence. There is no other statement. I have asked. Whether or not there was a statement, I asked Tracy Lewis at the hospital. Let me be real clear because he keeps conflating stuff. Adrian Bean never told Detective Quinn that he made a statement at the hospital. I, literally, you, I have his but he's, uh, Okay, but we don't know where he made the statement. And also, he's lied. So we don't know what he lied about either. Your Honor, to be very clear, there is no statement. I have asked Detective Lewis. They can ask Detective Lewis. She never talked to him. Okay. Detective Quinn, whom, who is the only person, it's not just police, the only person Adrian Bean asserts to Brian Steele in this recording that he gave us, this 10-minute recording, he said, I spoke to Detective Quinn. It's obvious that he didn't speak to Detective Quinn at the hospital because the first time he met Detective Quinn was September 17th when he pulls him in for the interview. Literally. Mr. Steele is... So he is manufacturing something. So when the court, the court is even asking me, okay, do you know where this statement is? Assuming that there's, a, there's not a statement. There is no statement. There's no evidence. That's the problem with Mr. Steele asking questions the way that he asked them. He is assuming facts that are not in evidence. 
and he is usurping the jury's province and their ability to discern and weigh evidence because he is injecting assertions into his questions about things that don't exist. Similarly, he says, do you recall explaining that you made calls from the Fulton County Jail that you knew were being recorded to support your lie to the police that Jeffrey was involved on September 11, 2013. That's what he asked the witness. You heard the interview. He doesn't say that anywhere in that interview. This is the kind of manufactured evidence Mr. Steele keeps putting in front of the jury. He never said that during the interview yet. That's the question. That's the question Mr. Steele asked Adrian B on the stand. Nothing like that ever happened. And he, his conversation, during his cross-examination of Adrian Bean, the cross-examination is replete with examples just like that. There is no statement. He can't sit there and say there has to be a statement and then ask the question as if there is one because that's improperly asserting to the jury something that isn't factual. There's no evidence of it. So to answer the court's question, of course we have asked whether who spoke to whom. Did Tracy Lewis, did you speak to Adrian B? I talked, Tracy Lewis, I talked to Walter Murphy and I put it in my report. I made a report of that. Calhoun, did you talk to who did you talk to Adrian B? I talked to Frederick Prothro. Here is my recording of that. Detective Quint, and then this idea of destruction of evidence that is the fallacy that is getting thrown around. That's the problem with asserting facts not in evidence. That's the problem with them being allowed to ask those kind of questions. Do you destroy evidence? Nobody has said anyone destroyed any evidence. Eduardo Navarro Flores said he heard that Detective Quinn had erased the interview. Well, then why all throughout Detective Quinn's report does he refer to the lie that Eduardo told in the first place? How is that destroying evidence? But they're trying to create a narrative for the jury of things that don't exist, a narrative that somehow the state destroys evidence. There's been no evidence, no suggestion that the state has destroyed any evidence, but they're going to ask it a million times. So that's what Mr. Steele is doing with this whole statement at the hospital. He's going to ask it a million times. So the jury's sitting there going, well, where is it? And then and the end, a hundred dollars says that he gets up there and says they destroyed the statement from the hospital, knowing he has no evidence that one even exists with Detective Lewis and certainly not Detective Quinn, who is the only person Adrian Bean tells Mr. Steele, at least in the portion of the recorded interview he gave me. I don't know what else he told. I don't know what Mr. Steele told Adrian Bean. But it's obvious that he's leading him through the interview that the court heard. And even being led, Adrian Bean does not let up on his assertion about Detective Queen. Mr. Steele tries to get him to change it. You mean it, somebody else, other police, other, no, just Detective Queen. So this idea that he has a right to ask questions that assume things that are not in evidence, that he has not put in evidence, that he cannot expect to be put in evidence is ludicrous. And to assert that the state is trying to hide something because he wants to taint the jury's mind, taint the fact finders with falsehoods, and somehow, I guess that's the way he wins cases, I don't know. But, Your Honor, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. This, he's, the number of times he asked Adrian Bean Questions that assumed facts that are not in evidence is just staggering. I, it's just staggering. I'm simply asking that Mr. Steele be prohibited, precluded from asking those kind of questions. And Your Honor, I'm asking that any reference to statements made at the hospital in the manner that he has asked them um, that assume that there was one um, be stricken and that the court uh, instructs the jury that there is no evidence of any statement made at the hospital to a Detective Lewis. And then let them weigh whether or not a, a statement was given to Detective Quinn. But that's not the question that Mr. Steele asked. 